What you guys do this after installing Windows 11. If you're a Windows tweaker and you love tweaking Windows 11 and you like a super lightweight system and you'd like to debloat Windows, then this video is for you. Now, if you like running a stock Windows 11 setup, then maybe this video is not for you. But we're going to take a look anyway at some of the programs that you can use. So first off, it's important that you download all of the latest updates for Windows 11. You can go ahead and download these using the Windows Update and uh, we'll get these all downloaded and installed on the system. If you're running Windows 10, then you also want to make sure you're fully updated before you continue uh, with the rest of this video. Now, you don't have to worry about feature updates. Just make sure you've got all the latest security updates installed on your system. This will keep your system nice and secure and safe, and you'll be running all the latest security updates for that computer. You can disable feature updates a little bit later on in the video. I'll show you how to do that. So once you get all of the updates installed, it will restart and basically install these updates on your computer. So I just let these install on the computer. Once you've done all this, restart the PC and check for updates and make sure all of the updates are downloaded and installed. Once we've got this done, it's important that you get all the latest drivers uh, on your PC. So if you've just done a fresh install of Windows, you want to make sure that you head over to the motherboard manufacturer and go to the support page and download all of the drivers for that particular computer. There's going to be audio drivers, network drivers, chipset drivers, and a bunch of other drivers that you need to download. Now, Windows does a pretty good job at this, but I always prefer to disable that feature and get the drivers from the manufacturer's website because this way you get the best drivers and the latest drivers from them. Microsoft drivers aren't always uh, you know, updated regular enough, and sometimes you can end up installing old drivers from Microsoft. There is BIOS and firmware updates here that you can check out. If you've got a brand new system, you may want to check for the latest uh, BIOS update to make sure you're getting the best security and also the best compatibility list for that particular motherboard. Once you've done all of this, it's important that we create a restore point. You can go into the search box and type restore and then create a restore point right here. By default, this is disabled, but if you want to enable it, just highlight it click configure, and then you can then give it some uh, disk space that it's going to need. Turn on the system protection here, and then you can apply this to your computer settings. And then basically, once we've done this, we can then create a restore point. This is important because anytime you make tweaks or changes to your PC, if you ever want to roll back to a, a restore point that you created, you can do. And this way, it's a bit of a safety net just in case you mess things up. A lot of people love tweaking their PC, and I see it so much when they come back to the Discord server and they've always messed up something on their computer. So by doing this, this will actually allow you to roll back. So next up, we're going to download this piece of software called X Toolbox. It's basically a program that's going to allow you to download other programs and other useful software to tweak your system. So this is it here. You can see here, if this program gets flagged as malware, it's a false positive. The program is literally open source. Don't worry. Nope, this program won't run on Windows 7, 8, or 8.1. You can check out what uh, false positives are. If you don't like to have your antivirus flagging this and blocking it, then maybe don't use this program. But hit the latest and download X Toolbox. Now you can see the browser is blocking this file and that's because it's an executable file and it thinks it's malicious. So if you want to download it, you're going to have to go to the settings here on the three dots. So hit the three dots, hit the download button and hit the three dots here and keep. Now, if you're worried about things like this, then maybe don't download the program altogether. Show more, keep anyway, and this will download the executable file onto your computer. So once we've got this downloaded here, what you can do is you can see it here. I'll just get it out of the downloads area and drag this to my desktop. Now, Windows Defender hasn't done anything about this file, which tells me it's more than likely just a false positive, like the person says. I'm going to upload it to VirusTotal to see how many flags that this program does have. Now, I'm expecting there might be a couple. There we go. And you can see here, uh, Cronus has actually said it's suspicious. 
But that doesn't mean it's malicious. It could be just a false positive, like the person has said. And again, the other ones are just not a well known company. All of the other antivirus programs are saying it's okay, including mine. So I'm going to run it anyway. And I'm going to right click on here and run as administrator and say yes to the user account control and open up the command prompt box here. As you can see, you have to agree to their terms and conditions here. You just read through this and basically say why for yes if you want to run it. If you don't want to run it, you can say no and don't use the program. It doesn't matter to me whether you use the program or not. I think it's a false positive and I'm going to use it on this system. So here we have access to dbloat, tweaks, apps, and cleaning and antiviruses. So right here under the dbloat, we're gonna start off with this area here. There's a bunch of little ones you can use here. And again, we've got the tweak section and the apps, and we also have the cleaning and antivirus. Now this is basically uh, an area where we can just download the programs. So by putting in, for instance, D, uh, say for instance, free, this is gonna allow us to download the actual program. Now we can go to the website ourselves and download it, but this is gonna save a lot of time when you can basically download a lot of these from here. So it obviously doesn't like capital D, so I'm just gonna do a lowercase d and a free to download Shut Up 10, which works with Windows 10 and Windows 11. You can see it's pulled this down and it's now gonna open this up and then we can actually run it on this system and make some tweaks. Now you can do other programs in here. I'm just showing you this one so you know how to use it. I'm gonna to go to actions and apply this and say yes. The reason why I'm using ONO Shut Up 10 is because it allows you to make uh, changes to the system to uh, debloat it and take out the telemetry, but it also allows you to restore your settings back to default settings. If you go up to actions, you should see here uh, undo all changes factory settings, and this will put everything back. This is important for me because I like to show people how to apply changes and then revert them back. So let's go ahead and uh, restart the system. Once we've done this, we can move on to the next one. So I'm going to open up another one here. There's a bunch of different ones on here you can choose from. I'm just going to have a look at one more here, but you can go ahead and have a look at some of these. Now, the ones in red, I would probably leave alone because these are probably more aggressive and they might not have something to reverse back. So that's probably why they're in red. So I'd leave those alone and just use the ones that I'm showing you here. So optimizer. Choose your language. This will open up a program. This program is pretty useful. I've used it before, and sometimes I use it on new systems to get things done very quickly. Once you open this up, it's going to allow you to optimize the system. You can see here, optimize to performance under the general tab, but we've got some other tabs here like Windows 11, uh, UWP apps, startup apps, cleaner, pinger, hosts, registry, hardware, integrator, and options. You can see there's a bunch of them here you can choose from. So we'll go through some of these and I'll quickly show you uh, some of the settings you can actually uh, use here. So let's go back to the general and I'm gonna check mark some of these. I'm not gonna go really slow here. I'm just gonna show you a couple and then I'll show the full screen here on some of the selection I've gone for. Next up, we're gonna go to the Windows 11 tab here. And again, there's a lot of settings on here you can choose from. You can see here, disable my people, also restore classic uh, Explorer. You can choose whatever you like, uninstall OneDrive and a bunch of other stuff on here. Just make sure you know what you're disabling. Again, this is completely reversible. You would just go back and reverse these and it allows you to put these back afterwards. So make your selection like so. And once you've got this done, uh, we can move on to the next section. So next up, we're gonna go to UWP apps. These are the built-in apps. If you want to remove some of these, you can do. And again, I'm not gonna be getting rid of the .NET um, uh, ones here. I'm just going to basically remove some of the bloat that Windows like to load into Windows. So once you've got these selected, you can then click on uninstall. Again, your choice will be whatever you want to uninstall. You don't have to use this program. You can manually go there and in uninstall these yourself if you wish, but this just makes it super easy having it all under one hood. I'm going to go to start up here. And again, this is going to allow you to uh, remove stuff from the startup. Again, this is a, a new install, so there shouldn't be too much on here, but one 
OneDrive is obviously one of these. So I'm just going to quickly uninstall this. There's a little one installed on the bottom right and you can restore this and you can make a backup of it as well. From here also it allows you to quickly download and install useful apps that you use on your PC. There's plenty of other ones that do this as well but if you're like me and you want to use just one thing to do all you can use this program to download Discord, your browser and a bunch of .NET frameworks, uh, DirectX and a load of other stuff that you use on a regular daily basis. So just put the check marks in the ones you want to use and download and install them. And once you've done that, restart your system, apply these settings and restart. Now you can do more tweaking if you wish. I'm just going to leave it right there because we'll be here all day. But basically we've removed a bunch of bloatware and we've also uh, uninstalled a bunch of apps. Let's have a quick look at the start menu. Again, these settings have all been set. You can go to all apps and you can see it's removed a hell of a lot of bloat and installed our applications that we wanted. And from here also, we can also go back here and we can go to settings and take a look at privacy and security. And you'll see under the privacy and security, it's also made loads of changes here and turned off a lot of these features that you don't need. This is very quick and easy to do and it's very useful because it saves you have to manually going in here and doing these one by one. This does it all for you. So bear that in mind, makes it much more easier to use this sort of stuff. And the good thing with this sort of method is that it is completely reversible. You also have that safety net of a restore point, which means you can always roll back to before that time when you made those changes and it should give you back your operating system the way it was. Now, whether you use this sort of program or not, now you can go and download these applications, but there's loads of other bits in here, which is quite useful. I've only just showed you a couple of bits. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments section below. But my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who are joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you on the Discord server for a chat, or I'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.